friends. As you can see, we're back from the beach, back in my messy house. Um, I wanted to talk about another big idea this week. So a couple weeks ago, we talked about kindness. And I was trying to think about what we can talk about if you've caught any of the news lately. Um, and I was thinking about two of my favorite shows when I was a kid. And one of them is the shirt I wear sometimes. Do you know who this is? This is a man named Mr. Rogers. And Fred Rogers had a TV show on a fairly long time ago because I watched it when I was little. And my kids like to watch it too. He has another, he has a character named, this guy is Daniel Tiger. Does he look like Daniel Tiger that you know? Have you seen a show with Daniel Tiger? Yeah, Mr. Rogers, Fred Rogers right here, his son has started Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood. And if you haven't watched it, I want to encourage you to watch it. It's a great show. It talks a lot about how to deal with feelings, how to work with other people, and social skills like that. It's really wonderful. Um, so Mr. Rogers, when I was a kid, he had a show and he talked a lot about social things too. So how we treat other people, how other people treat us. Um, and one of my favorite quotes from him, and you might have heard of this one, is that when he was a kid and he would see scary things happening in the world and in the news, he asked his mom about that. And his mom said to look for the helpers. So when you see something scary and bad happening, look for the people who are helping because that helps us to focus on the good that's in the world. So I wanted to talk about ways that you can be the helpers, ways that you can help in hard things. All right, so our theme this week is a big idea. It's called helping in the hard times. Yeah, another thing we were watching, another favorite show of mine, I said I was gonna talk about two of my favorite shows when I was a little kid, was Sesame Street. Have you watched Sesame Street? I used to love Sesame Street. And honestly, when I watch it with my kids, I still like Sesame Street. Um, Sesame Street, we were watching a town hall from them the other day, and my middle daughter said it reminded her of a time when friends at school helped her when she was hurt. So that was a hard thing for her, and her friends helped her. So that's what started me thinking about helping in hard times. So our hard times sometimes are really, really big, and sometimes they're a little bit smaller, but they're still hard to us. And so we wanna help our friends through those hard times, okay? All right. Now I promised one of my kids I would say something, and I'm gonna say it really fast, and then we'll keep going with the theme. But the way I bribed them to stay outside and be on the quieter side is that I promised I would say that my three kids are fantastic. So there you go. I kept my promise pipes. All right, are you ready? We're gonna talk about helping in the hard times and I am really excited about this theme and I hope that you enjoy it. Okay, we're gonna start with our first story, one of my favorites. I love this story. I'm gonna try very hard not to cry when I read it because it does make me teary. I love this story. Are you ready? Okay, this is called The Rabbit Listened and it's by Corey Dorfield. And there's a few things I absolutely love about this story, uh, but I hope that you're able to relate to the child and maybe to see some different ways that you can help a friend when they're having a hard time, okay? I also really, really love that this is dedicated to everyone who's rebuilding. And sometimes when we go through a hard thing, we have to rebuild afterward. Are you ready? All right, and this is from Dial Books for Young Readers. One day, Taylor decided to build something, something new, something special, something amazing. That is pretty amazing, isn't it? Taylor was so proud. What does it mean to feel proud? Do you know what that means? It means that you did something that you feel really good about. But then, out of nowhere, what happened? Oh no. Things came crashing down. Oh no. 
the chicken was the first to notice. And I'll be honest, the chicken responds the way that I respond a lot of the time when a friend has something bad happen or just something hard. Ready? Cluck, cluck, what a shame. I'm so sorry, sorry, sorry this happened. Let's talk, talk, talk about it. Chuck, chuck. But Taylor didn't feel like talking. So the chicken left. Next came the bear. Oh, what kind of response do you think the bear is going to have? Do you have any guesses about what the bear might say to do? Hmm. Oh man, I've seen this one happen too. Roar, roar, how horrible. I bet you feel so angry. Let's shout about it. Roar, roar, roar. But Taylor didn't feel like shouting. So the bear left. Ooh, that one hurt my throat. The elephant knew just what to do. I can fix this. We just need to remember exactly the way things were. But Taylor didn't feel like remembering. So the elephant also left. One by one, they came. The hyena. Do you know what a hyena is? If you've ever watched Lion King, you might have seen the hyenas there. The hyena, hee, let's laugh about it. The ostrich, go, oh, let's hide and pretend nothing happened. See, ostriches bury their heads in the sand. So that's why that's a joke. All right, ready? The kangaroo, disc, disc, what a mess. Let's throw it all away. And the snake, shh, let's go knock someone else's down. Oh, is that a kind way to deal with a problem? No, I understand the feeling. I've been there too. Yeah. But Taylor didn't feel like doing anything with anybody. So eventually they all left until Taylor was alone. In the quiet, Taylor didn't even notice the rabbit, but it moved closer and closer until Taylor could feel its warm body. Do you know what I appreciate? What's the rabbit doing right now? Is it doing anything? It's just being there, isn't it? It's just sitting with Taylor, so Taylor doesn't feel alone. Together, they sat in silence until Taylor said, please stay with me. The rabbit listened. The rabbit listened as Taylor talked. The rabbit listened as Taylor shouted. Remember, that's what the chicken and the bear wanted to do. Yeah, but Taylor needed a minute. The rabbit listened as Taylor remembered and laughed. The rabbit listened to Taylor's plans to hide, to throw everything away, to ruin things for someone else. Through it all, the rabbit never left. And when the time was right, the rabbit listened to Taylor's plans to build again. It's going to be amazing. Look at Taylor's plans. Those are pretty fantastic, aren't they? Yeah. Now, Sometimes when we're in the middle of a hard time, we just want somebody to sit with us and to feel what we're feeling with us. And that's what the rabbit did. The rabbit just sat and was with Taylor. And so when we want that and we want somebody just to be with us and to understand our feelings, that's called empathy. When somebody is with you and feels it with you, even though they might not understand and they might not have been there before, when they try and they sit with you and they say, oh, this stinks, I'm sorry this happened. But they also try to figure out what it would feel like for them, that's empathy. So when a friend is going through something that's hard, empathy is a fantastic thing for us to do. Now reading books from other points of view, so from people who might look different than you or who might think about the world differently than you, those are 
fantastic stepping stones to building empathy. Because when we read a book from somebody who's different than us, it helps us to see the world from their point of view. So see it through their eyes. And it helps us to grow and start to understand that other people see things differently. And that's okay. It's actually fantastic because we all have to see things a little bit differently for our world to work. Friends, I forgot to tell you, if you really liked The Rabbit Listened, and I can't imagine why you wouldn't have, it is available on Libby, which is an app that your grown-up can get from the library, where the library provides copies of things that we purchase, and they can get the stuff right on their phones or their tablets or whatever they're using. So if you really liked The Rabbit Listened, and you can't get it out from the library just yet because we're not open yet all the way, you can get it on a device. So if you need any help with that, grownups, you're welcome to reach out to the library. We're happy to help you figure out how to download Libby, how to add the app, um, how to search on it. It's really user friendly. We really love using it at our house. All right, so I want to make sure I told you about that. I was thinking it might be nice to sing, May There Always Be Sunshine. Would you like to sing it with me? Do you remember the words as we learned them a few weeks ago? All right, let's start with the way it's written and then we can think of some other things we want there to always be. Are you ready? May there always be sunshine. May there always be blue skies. May there always be mamas. May there always be the world. All right, this time I think we're gonna sing, may there always be flowers. May there always be pools, because my kids are all playing in a pool right now. May there always be water, and may there always be you. Are you ready? May there always be flowers. May there always be pools. May there always be water. May there always be you. All right, you did such a good job. Thanks for singing along with me. I don't love to sing by myself. I like to sing with other people. I do, especially when I'm singing a cappella. Do you know what a cappella means? It means when we sing without music in the background. Yeah. Okay, let's see. I was thinking it might be fantastic to read another story. This one has another big idea in it. We talked about showing other people love and just being with them when they're having a rough time. But sometimes we can't be right with that person. And I thought this might be a good book for that. Are you ready? Great. This one is called The Invisible String. It's by... Patrice Karst and illustrated by Joanne. Uh, I don't know how to say her last name. I can't. Okay. The Invisible String. And this is from Little Brown and Company, which has been very gracious to let us read their stories. Ready? Liza and Jeremy, the twins, were asleep one calm and quiet night. Do you know what twins are? Twins are brothers or sisters or brothers and sisters who were born at the same time. Yep. Ready? Suddenly it began to rain very hard. Thunder rumbled until it got so loud that it woke them up. Mommy, mommy, they cried as they ran to her. Mm, have you ever had that happen when you had a big storm? Don't worry, you two, it's just a storm making all that noise. Go back to bed. We want to stay close to you, said Jeremy. We're scared, Mom said. You know we're always together no matter what. But how can we be together when you're out here and we're in bed, said Liza. Hmm, that's a good question. We're not always with the people we love, are we? Hmm. Mom held something right in front of them and said, this is how. Do you see anything? Rubbing their sleepy eyes, the twins came closer to see what mom was holding. I was about your age when my mommy first told me about the invisible string. Do you know what invisible means? It means you can't see something. Mm -hmm. I don't see a string, said Jeremy. 
You don't need to see the invisible string. People who love each other are always connected by a very special string made of love. But if you can't see it, how can you know it's there? Asked Liza. Even though you can't see it with your eyes, you can feel it with your heart and know that you are always connected to everyone you love. When you're at school and you miss me, your love travels all the way along the string until I feel it tug on my heart. And when you tug it right back, we feel it in our hearts, said Jeremy. Does Jasper the cat have an invisible string, Liza asked. She sure does, said Mom. And best friends like me and Lucy, asked Liza. Best friends too. How far can the string reach? Anywhere and everywhere, Mom said. Would it reach me even if I were a submarine captain Look. deep in the ocean, asked Jeremy. Not right now. Please play outside. Look, there might be other falling off because of the water. Okay, we can take it off and throw it away. Yes, said Mom. Even there, all the way down in the ocean. Mom, or a mountain climber? Even there. It looks great. All right, go play. <laughs> A dancer in France? Even there. A jungle explorer? Even there. That would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? How about an astronaut out in space? Yes, even there. Then Jeremy quietly asked, Can my string reach all the way to Uncle Brian even though he died? Yes, even there. Does the string go away when you're mad at us? Oh no, what did they do? They painted the house, oh dear. Never, said mom. Love is stronger than anger. And as long as love is in your heart, the string will always be there. Even when you get older and can't agree about things like which movie to see or what game to play in the back seat or what time to go to bed. Oh, that's right, you two should be in bed. And with that, they all laughed as mom chased the twins back to their beds. Within a few minutes, they were asleep, even though the storm was still making some loud noises outside. As they slept, they started dreaming of all the invisible strings they have and all the strings their friends have and their friends have and their friends have until everyone in the world was connected by invisible string. And from deep inside, they could clearly see. No one is ever alone. I really love the message of this story, that the people who love you are always with you, and the people you love always feel you with them. But sometimes that means that when somebody we love is hurting, we might feel that too. So just like we were talking about earlier with the idea of empathy, when someone we love hurts, we hurt a little bit and that's okay. Because you know what? When we hurt a little bit, it might help that friend feel a little better. Mm -hmm. Okay, you did a really great job. We're talking about some big, big, big ideas today, aren't we? Okay, we're gonna sing a song about love. Now I promised my littlest that we would sing this song because it's one of her favorites. We're gonna sing the song, Bushel in a Peck. Do you know that song? I used to know it a long, long time ago. It was somewhere back in my brain. And then my littlest started singing it all the time. And I love to sing it now. And especially cause I usually get it sung to me while little hands are patting my face and it's night and they're supposed to be asleep. Are you ready? All right. I love you, a bushel and a peck, a bushel and a peck and a hug around the neck, a hug around the neck, and a bushel and a peck. I love you. Do you feel that invisible string you and I have? Because I do, I love you. Do you want to try it again with me? We could do the sign for I love you. Do you know that? That's because in sign language, this is the letter I, this is the letter L, and I love starts with L and U starts with the letter Y, which is this sign. So I love you looks like this. 
Ready? Let's hold it up every time that we sing I love you. Okay, it means you put up your pinky, your pointer, and your thumb, and you hold down numbers three and four. Ready? I love you, a bushel and a peck, a bushel and a peck, and a hug around the neck, a hug around the neck, and a bushel and a peck. I love you. Good job. Okay, I have one more story that I wanted to read to you. Actually, I have like five more stories that I wanted to read to you, but we're going to read one of them because I don't want to make another 40-minute story time, even though I might still end up doing that because I have a bad habit of talking for too long. Our next story is about two of my favorite friends, and I'm guessing that if you've seen story time before, you know who I'm talking about. It's Elephant and Piggy. Oh, uh, you know I love Elephant and Piggy. And Elephant is also named Gerald, so you might remember that. Another thing that you might remember is that sometimes they are super dramatic, which means they have really big reactions to things. All right, Elephant and Piggy books are by Mo Willems and uh, put out by Hyperion Books for Kids. Are you ready? Gray. Elephants cannot dance. Wait a minute. Do you think that no elephants can dance? I bet some elephants can dance. Yeah, I don't think we wanna say no elephant can dance. Ready? <gasps> Gerald! Let's dance. I can teach you. I am teaching all my friends. I would love to learn how to dance, but Elephants cannot dance. You are kidding me. No. Look it up. Page 11. And that book is called What Elephants Can Do. Hmm. Gerald, it does not say that you cannot try. You are right, Piggy. I can try to dance. I will try to dance. He's making a very silly face. I love it. Oh, he went and put his book away. Oh, look at that outfit he came back with. It says, let's dance. Oh, oh no, he fell already. Hmm. Okay, let's go. Jump with me when I count to three. One, two, three, jump. Did you jump? You should. Go ahead and do what Piggy says. Jump. Oh. Jump. Oh. Elephant was a little late, huh? Whoop. You were a little late on the jump. I was a little late on the jump. We will try again. We will try again. Move your arms this way. Can you move your arms this way? Oh no. Is elephant doing what it says to do? No. We will try again. We will try again. Lift your leg this way. Can you lift your leg? Oh, elephant did the opposite, didn't he? He went behind. We will try again. We will try again. Up! Can you go up? Oh no, what did elephant do? Up! Down! Down! Oh, he went up too. Oh, goodness. Spin. Stop. Stop. Forward. Can you come toward me? Forward. Oh, elephant went backwards. Look. Forward. Backward. Backward. Oh, dear. Wiggle, waggle. Wiggle, waggle. Robot walk. Robot walk. Can you do a robot walk? I bet that one's pretty fun. Enough. Uh-oh. How do you think Elephant is feeling? Hmm. He looks frustrated to me. What do you think? Do you know what frustrated means? It means when you try something, and you try, and you try, and it's just not working, and you kind of don't want to try anymore. Yeah. I have tried and tried and tried and tried and tried, but I am an elephant and elephants just 
cannot dance. Up. Oh, Gerald. I don't think Gerald looks frustrated anymore. What does he look like he's feeling now? What do you think? I think sad is a pretty good guess. Yeah. Hello! We are ready to learn some moves. I'm sorry. I cannot teach you right now. My friend is sad. Oh, isn't Piggy a good friend? I know. She could just go play with the squirrels. Yeah, but she's not going to. She wants to stay with her buddy. Silly, we do not want you to teach us. We want to learn the elephant. Teach me, please. Me too. Me three. Look, they all want to learn the elephant. More feeling. Keep trying. You are getting it. Does Elephant look like he's feeling a little bit better now? Yeah, he does, doesn't he? All right. I really appreciate that Piggy stayed with her friend when he was feeling sad. And she didn't just leave him to go have more fun with her other friends, did she? No. And I also really like that the squirrels could see that what Elephant was doing was fun and different. And that that was exciting. You did a fantastic job with that story. Let's go ahead and talk about a couple other stories I think you might like to read, okay? I, I am not going to read them all to you because honestly, that would take a long time. Okay, ready? Let's see. Now the first one that I really, really, really want you to try to read or watch the movie of is Last Stop on Market Street. I love this book. It's by Matt de la Pena and the pictures are by Christian Robinson. And I love the pictures and I really, really love the message of this story. Um, this one was a Newbery winner and a Caldecott winner and a Corda Scott King winner and a New York Times bestseller. So if you haven't seen it, you might want to check it out. Guess what? Since I'm not going to read it to you right now, you can watch the video on Hoopla, which is another one of our apps. You can watch an animated version of it where they're gonna read the book to you. So much fun. You can also read the book if your grown-up wants to read it to you or if you wanna look at the pictures yourself on Libby uh, and maybe on Hoopla, not 100% sure. Um, you can also listen to it on YouTube, read by the author if you wanted. Okay, all right. So last stop on Market Street, fantastic book. It's about a little boy and his Nana and they are waiting for the bus to go somewhere. And the book is about the people they meet on the bus and maybe sometimes feeling jealous of things that you want and then realizing all the beauty all around you. It's a fantastic story. And I really love that the whole way through, there's lots of different looking people lots of characters and it talks about things that we wish we had only to realize that what we have is enough and what we have is great and then oh, I wanted to show you toward the end I'm gonna kind of ruin the book for you I'm sorry spoiler but not really um, last stop on Market Street oh that was the name of the book mr. Dennis called that's the bus driver CJ looked around as he stepped off the bus. Crumbling sidewalks and broken down doors, graffiti tagged windows and boarded up stores. He reached for his Nana's hand. Why is it always so dirty over here? She smiled and pointed at the sky. Sometimes when you're surrounded by dirt, CJ, you're a better witness for what's beautiful. What do you think is in the sky? CJ saw the perfect rainbow arcing over their soup kitchen how his Nana always found beautiful where he never even thought to look. He looked all around them again at the bus rounding the corner out of sight and the broken street lamps lit up bright and the stray cat shadows moving across the wall. When he spotted their familiar faces in the window, he said, I'm glad we came. Do you see where they are? thought his Nana might laugh her deep laugh, but she didn't. She patted him on the head and told him, 
Me too, CJ. Now, come on. Look at that. They're going to help other people. They're going to feed people who might not have food otherwise. That's what a soup kitchen does. So I really love this story because it talks a lot about, like I said, looking around and seeing things that you might want, but realizing that what you have is plenty. And it also talks about ways to serve your community. So ways to help other people in the world around you. Um, let's see, what else do I have? I have Love Monster, another one of my favorite stories. It's by Rachel Bright. Um, and it's a story about a, a really nice monster who doesn't look like the other people around him or the other animals around him. And he lives in a world filled with cute and he's just looking for a buddy. So, Love Monster, super cute. There's a whole series by Rachel Bright. And Good News, Bad News is a nice book if you're starting to work on trying to develop empathy. Uh, like we talked about earlier, grown-ups, empathy is starting to understand how other people might feel in a situation. So in this one, Good News, Bad News, they have very different points of view. That, in other words, they think very different things about the same things happening. So you could go through and try to figure out why they might be feeling that way for Good News, Bad News. Um, and that book is by Scholastic. So I wanted to make sure I pointed those out to you. Um, some of them are available in the library system, but not, probably not until we open. Um, I wanted to make sure though that I told you about Last Stop on Market Street being available on Hoopla as a movie, because that's super fun, and on Libby. Okay, I had a few ideas that I wanted to talk to you about today that you could try at home. These are a little different than what we've been talking about. Like they're not art projects really. Um, they're not things that you can build or put together. They're kind of some big ideas because this is a big idea week, isn't it? Uh, yeah, helping in hard times is a big idea. It's a hard thing to do, but it's so worth it. Okay, some of the ideas I had are that you can get involved in your community, kind of like CJ and his Nana did um, through you can try to find an organization. You can try to uh, volunteer with an organization. You can try to do things on your own, like picking up trash, things like that, to help make your community more beautiful and help everybody take care of each other a little bit better. If you are looking for an organization and you live in the central Ohio area, uh, Seeds of Caring is a wonderful organization that actually is geared toward finding volunteer opportunities for kids to do with their families. So it's geared to whole families and it is fantastic for helping to broaden kids' horizons. So last year, my kids got to do some things like helping to mulch a playground, which really made them appreciate mulch on playgrounds, let me tell you, because it was hot and it was hard work. Uh, they got to do things like doing a music time, at, um, a goodwill outreach with people who have different abilities and some people who are older. Um, so it's fantastic for the kids getting to see people with other perspectives and see people that live life in a different way than they do. Um, so getting involved with your community is my first idea. I know that right now it's a little tricky because a lot of stuff is still shut down and we're still trying to socially distance, but there are ways that you can still get involved. Another thing that I was thinking is that you could focus grownups on reading books from people who look different than you, who think differently than you, who believe differently than you. Um, like I said earlier, that's one of the earliest ways we can start to develop empathy. And a lot of our internal bias biases start to form almost right away, but they are almost fully formed by 12, the research suggests. So it's okay to start young with these conversations. I know that they're hard and I know that it is uncomfortable but that doesn't make it bad. We want to have those uncomfortable conversations because I really honestly believe that these kids that we're raising who are so wonderful and we love them so much, I believe that these kids are going to make a huge difference. And if we can help them to not have the internal biases that we have had to overcome, it'll make a huge difference in our future. So I did want to make sure that I pointed out again, reading books from people who look differently than you, think differently than you, develops empathy, and that helps us to start to put ourselves in other people's perspective as we get older. Um, another thing that I wanted to suggest is that you could draw a picture, friends, of somebody that you love. 
Oh, you can draw somebody you love and then you can write all the things you love about that wonderful person. Um, if you need a little bit of help writing it, absolutely ask a grown up. I'm sure they would be happy to help you. You can tell them what you're thinking and they can write it down or you could try to sound it out and write some of the letters on your own. But I really want you to point out some things that you love about that person, okay? And then I was also thinking it might be good to start learning about famous people in history who cared for others and helped in hard times because that might give us some ideas of ways that we can help other people. There are a lot of picture books geared to this idea. There's Trailblazer series, there's Little Leader series. You can try to find some of those books and start learning about people throughout history who were in hard times and did big things. All right, I think that's all. Oh. Also, I wanted to suggest that you watch that Sesame Street special if you wanted to, to start, or you could work through the, there's a book called Raising Little Allies to Be, and that's from um, Wander and Wonder, and I thought you might enjoy working through that too. It has some fun activities that you could do, um, if that's, if that is something that you are working on with your kids, because we all want our kids to be a little more loving and a little more empathetic, right? All right, that is all I have for you this week. I want you to know that I love you. I feel my invisible heart strength to you. And I hope that you're doing well. Take care of each other and help each other. Love you. Hey friends, guess what? I finished my story time. I went to watch it and guess what I realized? My settings were wrong, weren't they? Were all the words backwards? They were. I know. But I don't want to spend another hour re-recording because last week I broke my phone when I was doing story time. And so this week I just had the settings wrong. I think I fixed it. And I wanted to show you the fronts of the books that we read again in case you're looking for them. Are you ready? All right. The first story that we read, if you remember, was The Rabbit Listened by Cory Dorfield. The second book that we read was... The Invisible String by Patrice Karst. The third book that we read was Elephant and Piggy, Elephants Cannot Dance. And then we talked about these books, Last Stop on Market Street, Love Monster, and Good News, Bad News. All right. I'm sorry that I'm not going to re-record the whole thing. I have to get ready to go into work, but I hope that that made everything make a little more sense, and I promise next week I'll get it right, okay? All right, bye.